The first time I spoke with Chris Kalika was um, about 10 o'clock at night when I'd been contacted uh, previously to interview for a position here at HSLDA. Because of his MS, you know, sometimes during the heat of the day he would have less energy and so he did a lot of things at night. And I didn't even know he had MS at the time he first called me, which, you know, I thought it was a little bit odd that he was calling me at 10 o'clock at night, but it was an interview. It was, my, it was a job interview that I had with him. It was my first contact with Chris. And um, we talked, um, and I had no idea that he was sick. In fact, the first time that I had any idea that he was sick was when I came to HSLDA and he came in on his scooter for our lunch meeting. He simply continued to work when he was technically disabled and he could have taken disability and we had a fine disability policy. We had talked to Chris about it. He just simply would not hear it. He would not hear it because God had given him a message and he felt that in the last three or four years his message was much stronger because of his personal experience than ever before. And the message was this, you think you have to quit, you don't. Look at my life, look at what I'm going through, look at what others have gone through. The fact of the matter is you're stronger when you're weak because at that point you're having to depend upon God and God then is basically flowing through you and He's doing the work and you're, you're part of it, but you're doing things you can't do in your own strength and you know it because God is doing it. We shared the same platform many times in the past decade uh, in homeschooling conventions and I watched the progress of Chris's disease uh, from uh, when he could still have mobility and stand erect uh, using crutches uh, to the last time that I was with him in Illinois uh, when he was uh, in, confined to a, a wheelchair and could not have been traveling apart from the help of his son. My dad was one of the best examples I've ever seen of power perfecting a weakness and his I mean his physical weakness was so apparent yet God was working through him in so many ways um, just with his you know with his mouth being able to communicate and, and share the gospel and you know go to conferences and even with his his physical weakness um, God still gave him strength and endurance. One of the things that struck me in that period of time was that rather than observing a man who was growing cynical, bitter, frustrated with this debilitation, that while his body wasted away, he was literally, in the words of 2 Corinthians 4, being renewed day by day by his faith in Jesus Christ. He was so weak he couldn't take a trip. But he got on the plane and we got there, there were 5,000 people, he gave seven talks, uh, he witnessed to three people on the plane and, you know, the taxi cab driver and he got back home and he was invigorated. And that's the way he would end uh, each and every time and hence the power perfected in weakness, the concept like Paul, the great apostle who had the thorn in the flesh. Paul's response was, therefore I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of God might rest upon me that when I'm weak I'm strong and of course that's the theme of the book and that's the theme of Chris's life. His relationship with Jesus Christ was the most important thing to Chris Klicka and that came through no matter what was going on at any given point in time whether he was sitting next to someone in an airplane talking with them witnessing to them I mean every person uh, who came into contact with Chris Klicka was going to receive the gospel even if they were Christian, they were going to hear the gospel, and then they would have to talk about struggles and encur encouraging one another. And it th didn't matter. Chris was one of those people whose lamp just seemed to shine brighter and brighter uh, as he went along. And I remember uh, standing in the back in Illinois, watching him on the stage uh, in his wheelchair, passionately talking to people about this disease, about his suffering, and about his the grace he had known in Christ. Passion is just a word that I think about with Chris, more so than very many other people I know. Um, he did everything as unto the Lord, and uh, I really don't know very many people who that, that I look at them and I can say, see that like in every aspect of their lives. He was um, 
He makes me cry thinking about him. No matter what the difficulty was, whether it was he was having a hard time putting his shoes on or he had just crashed his scooter and was waiting for the ambulance, he was, he was right there with Jesus Christ. You know, he always depended on Christ. And in that, he was an example for all of us. You see that in a person, and you see how much he gets done despite the fact that he doesn't really have the ability to do it. It encourages you to, to go further than you think you can do. That, I think that's really the purpose of the book, is to say to all of us, look, when you think you've reached the end, you haven't, you've just started. I look back on my dad's example and it's like, you know, if God can use him, with, you know, he couldn't walk, he could barely get around, he had to have, you know, people help him do so many things, you know, God can use anyone. And I think it's a, it's a timeless message because if we're Christians long enough, we're going to have trials and tribulations and struggles. And if somebody says, boy, I've never had them, who, watch out, because that's the way we grow. We have uh, in this book, Power Perfected Weakness, a champion of Christ who has run the race before us and who is saying, here is how to know God in the midst of suffering. Now, obviously, we all will have our own pilgrimage, but to have someone blazing the trail and leaving uh, the markers behind for us is of great help, and Chris has done that in this book.